There are usually three ways the forest is shown. I will tell you how to write each forest in Cartesian vector notation. Let's start with the first example. We can start by writing the x component of force F1. That's equal to 5 kN multiplied by cosine 60 degrees. You can see that we are multiplying the force by the angle between the positive x axis and the force itself. The pink dashed line shows the x component of force F1 along the x axis. Next, we can write the y component of force F1. That's equal to 5 kN multiplied by cosine 45 degrees. Again, we are multiplying the force by the angle between the positive y axis and the force itself. The angle always corresponds to the axis of the component we are trying to find. The pink dashed line labeled F1y shows the y component of force F1 along the y axis. Finally, we can write the z component of force F1. That's equal to 5 kN multiplied by cosine 60 degrees. As before, the force is multiplied by the angle between the positive z axis and the force itself. The pink dashed line labeled F1z shows the z component of force F1 along the z axis. When a force is given with the coordinate direction angles, you multiply the force by the cosine of the angle between the positive axes of the component you're trying to find. We can now write force F1 in Cartesian vector notation, which is 2.5i plus 3.5j plus 2.5k, each value corresponding to each of the components we found. Let's look at force F2. Force F2 doesn't have an x component or a z component because it lies on the y axis. In fact, you can see that it lies on the negative y-axis. When we write each force, we can simply write the x component and the z component to be zero. The y component is 2 kN. However, note that it lies on the negative direction. In Cartesian vector notation, we can write it as 0i negative 2j plus 0k. Let's look at the next example. In this diagram, note that the angles we see are not coordinate direction angles. We will first look at force F1. We can see that it lies in the xz plane. Because of that, force F1 does not have a y component. It only has an x component and a z component. We can use trigonometry to figure out the x and z components. Because this is a right angle triangle, we can use our basic trig functions to figure out each component. We can write cosine 30 degrees is equal to the x component over 300 newtons because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Isolating for the x component and solving gives us 260 newtons. We can also write another one for sine 30 degrees, which is equal to the z component over 300 newtons. Remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Again, isolating for the z component and solving gives us 150 newtons. With these values, we can now write force F1 in Cartesian vector notation, which is 260i plus 0j negative 150k. Our k term is negative because the force is in the negative z axis. The pink dashed lines show the x and z components of force F1. Let's now look at force F2. Force F2 has all three components. These components are labeled on the diagram. To find these components, we will have to find F prime, which is the force that lies on the xy plane. To find F prime, we can use basic trigonometry like we did before, as this is a right angle triangle. F prime is equal to 500 newtons multiplied by cosine 45 degrees, which when solved is equal to 353.5 newtons. We can also find the z component. The z component is equal to 500 newtons multiplied by sine 45 degrees, which again is 353.5 newtons when solved. We can now use f prime to find the x and y components. Notice how f prime is the hypotenuse of the new triangle we just formed. Again, this is a right angle triangle and we can use trigonometry to solve for the x and y components. The x component is equal to 353.5 newtons multiplied by sine 30 degrees, which when solved is equal to 177 newtons. The y component is equal to 353.5 newtons multiplied by cosine 30 degrees, which when solved equals 306 newtons. Again, the f prime value we found was the hypotenuse of the triangle we formed, and we used that value to figure out the x and y components. Finally, let's write down force f2 in Cartesian vector notation, which is 177i plus 306j negative 354k newtons. Notice that our k value is negative. This is because the z component of force F2 is in the negative z direction. The last method we will look at is when a force is shown to be along a rope or a wire or going from one point to another. To start with this example, we must first figure out where point A is with respect to the origin and we will write it in Cartesian vector notation. Point A is at 0.5i negative 1.5j plus 0k meters. Notice that our j component is negative, that's because point A is on the negative y-axis side. 
Now let's look at point B. Again, we must write where point B is with respect to the origin. Point B is at negative 1.5 i, negative 2.5 j, plus 2k meters. Note the negative signs which correspond to the negative axes. We can now find the position vector, denoted RAB. It can be found by subtracting the corresponding coordinates of B from A. When we simplify, RAB is equal to negative 2i, negative 1j, plus 2k meters. The next step is to find the magnitude of this position vector. The magnitude is equal to the square root of negative 2 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 2 squared, which when solved equals 3 meters. Next up is finding the unit vector, denoted u. The unit vector is simply each corresponding coordinate of RAB divided by the magnitude. The unit vector is equal to negative 2 over 3i, negative 1 over 3j, and 2 over 3k. We can now write force FB in Cartesian vector notation. To do so, we multiply each corresponding unit of our unit vector by the force itself. FB in Cartesian vector notation is negative 400i, negative 200j, plus 400k newtons. Now, let's find force FC in Cartesian vector notation. We already know where point E is, so we only need to find where point C is with respect to the origin. Point C in Cartesian vector notation is at negative 1.5i, plus 0.5j, plus 3.5k meters. As before, we can determine the position vector RAC by subtracting each of the corresponding coordinates of C from A. When solved, RAC is negative 2i plus 2j plus 3.5k meters. The next step is to find the magnitude of our position vector. The magnitude is equal to the square root of each individual term in RAC squared and added together, which when solved is equal to 4.5 meters. Now we can figure out the unit vector which is each of the corresponding coordinates of RAC divided by the magnitude of RAC. The unit vector is equal to negative 2 over 4.5i plus 2 over 4.5j plus 3.5 over 4.5k. Finally, we can write force FC in Cartesian vector notation by multiplying the force by each of the corresponding unit vector coordinates. Force FC in Cartesian vector notation is negative 200i plus 200j plus 350k newtons.